Well, hello there. Welcome to the OB Thorn Alliance. I'm Jacob. And I'm Luke. We're the YouTube channel where we offer the opinion from two different perspectives. We've got that of someone on the autism spectrum and that of someone who is not. If you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And what are we doing in today's video, Jacob? We are breaking down and discussing a very awesome show, The Boys Season 3. Yes, we've got three episodes that came out so far. Um, the Boys, I've mentioned on multiple occasions, is probably my favourite show of all time. And everyone I know that's seen it absolutely loves it. And I know you really like it too. Of course, yeah. So we've got three episodes that have come out all at once. And we're going to get one weekly for... Is it seven episodes, eight episodes this season? Uh, eight episodes. Eight. So we're going to get five more uh, weekly episodes until the series finishes. So let's get into it. Let's try and summarise what's happened in the first three episodes, which oh, isn't wow. easily done because a lot has happened in considering we've got three episodes all at once. So let's have a crack at it. What's your best summary of what we've seen so far? Um, basically, it's been a year since season two and there seems like there's been some peace that has happened. The crime rate has dropped, I guess, and... Uh, the butcher way of thinking, I guess, appear isn't um, working and Huey is working for, I believe it's meant to be the FBI, but in the boys' universe, it's the FBDI or something. Yeah, it's like, a, I guess the FBI would exist, but this is a, a separate company that's been like the, the Federal Bureau of like Superhero or Superhuman Investigation. So it's a special unit that just specifies in superheroes and that's their attempt to try and bring you know equilibrium to that the superheroes seem to have you know all the power and getting away of everything yeah so who is mindset is basically we need to come in this perspective in a different way of um you know doing it in a good way and he disagrees with the butcher so uh yeah we, he wants to do it by the book what we think his way is working and then we get to see, obviously, the seven with their Dawn of Justice like film and how that's going. And Homeland is seems like he's losing power with the seven. He's um, not as strong as he used to be. Starlight is actually carrying more favor, more favoritism with the company, and they become co-captains. Yeah, so I think Homelander they realize that he's not that favorable and not as liked and you know what he's sick of getting told that and he's also sick of getting told that he can be controlled because he thinks that he is the most powerful thing he refers to himself as a god so he's like how can you tell me what to do i could just destroy this whole planet if i wanted to and then we've got the the head of vort who seems to think that he has power over homelander and he's not he doesn't fear this you know superhuman person that can kill him quite easily so i I don't know why that is. He seems to have no fear of him. So as you said, Starlight is now made co-captain and Homeland is not happy about that. But as we learn, he's got kind of a sinister twist to that. Yeah, basically what the events with season two with uh, Stormfront, basically uh, uh, that's kind of one of the reasons why he's not as popular is because uh, he had a relationship with her and that's why people look down on him and uh things don't go well when in uh one of the episode uh she dies yeah she they said that she bit her tongue and took her own life and mm. i guess she was quite injured and burnt but she was still kind of in love with homelander and still doing sexual things with him even though she was oh, like a shell of a human being laying there in the hospital bed um but I think maybe she had enough as enough because she really thought Homelander was going to help with her Nazi ideology she had, but he just thinks that he is the God race. He doesn't believe in a particular race like the Nazis do. Uh, without being in complete order, there's heaps of other things going on. It's, a, it's hard to summarise what we've seen so far. So we've got, you know, Huey that was wanting to play it by the books. 
only discover that his boss is actually a, a, re a really bad superhero that can, you know, pop Pong. people's heads with her mind, which we later work out through the three episodes that she is a, an adopted daughter of the CEO of Vought. Mm. And I guess that's because he knows that she can be used for a lot of things. She has a lot of power. And I wonder if she might be able to... wonder what she could do to Homelander. I wonder mm. if she has the ability to kill him. We've got... Uh, so Huey is following that, but then realizes that that's not going to work. So he reunites with the boys. We've got Billy. He's, you know, making friends with his late wife's son, who is, you know, half of Homelanders and trying to keep him away from Homelanders. So he is, um, you know, building a relationship with him and trying to be a father figure. And then we've got Mother's Milk, who is trying to adapt to normal life and forget about what um, the superheroes have done to his family and that he wants to, you know, start to reunite with his daughter and get back together with his ex-wife, which that's not going to plan. And Frenchie and Kimiko are kind of just hanging out, mm. you know, they're not doing too much. But ultimately, at the end of the three episodes, we're now left with the boys reunited and they've decided that they need to take down the superheroes Billy's way because it seems to be the only thing that's going to work and then they've also got Starlight on the inside helping them out so what's their big plan so far what do they believe is going to help them be able to take out Homelander in particular because he's a psychopath this secret weapon that apparently took down a soldier boy that is basically a Captain America like superhero but we haven't actually seen this weapon work we saw in episode 3 a flashback episode of um, him apparently being kidnapped by Russians. Yeah, so there we're seeing flashbacks of this character, Soldier Boy, that they they keep referring to as. They said he's but he is Captain America by another name, just in this franchise, mm. and he was a bit of a, a dickhead to be honest, and not yeah. the greatest of person. And they he was taken out supposedly, and they think if something could take him out, then it could be used to take out Homelander. So. I think this series is going to follow them going down this rabbit hole of trying to uncover what happened to him. And along the way so far, they've been interrogating his his group of friends, which was kind of resembled the Avengers, mm. and trying to find out what they know. And none of them want to give up these secrets or tell you what happened. But we're left with at the end of the third episode that supposedly the Russians possessed the weapon mm. and the Russians killed him and they took him. But... I think there's going to be more to it. Is there agree, anything yeah. important you think we've missed that that builds part of what we've seen in the first three episodes? Um, I guess um, getting revealed that the how um, Billy actually got the drug and it was from one of the seven. Oh, yes, that's right. So they've discovered that Bort is now trying to move into... Military. Yeah, they, they want... Well, they, I think they always wanted to be part of the military, but they now have this idea that they can sell you this compound V mm. that will last one day, and that will allow them to create super soldiers temporarily so that they can win battles. Mm. And the military don't want any part of that, mm. but Vought thinks that it's the future. And um, Captain... Miss, is it Miss Maeve? Is that what they call her? She's basically one Norman. Yeah. Yeah, she, she is now also against the she's part of the seven but also another intel and she's got uh, a vial of this and she's given some to billy and he has taken it and he got some cool powers the first time he took it mm. it did make him sick but he did get you know strength and uh, like laser powers very similar to that of homelander mm. uh, so we're left with him having this ability to get new powers and possibly having them long term and we're left with, you know, Huey returning to the boys and then pursuing what happened to Soldier Boy and whether they can use those um, that weapon to take down Homelander. And Homelander um, is revealed to the world that he is, you know, actually evil and they seem to be okay with I it. Love it. And he has convinced them that he's dating Starlight, <laughs> even though she's clearly dating Huey, because he thinks that's going to make it better. But he... Constantly manipulating people, particularly um, the Deep, who's now been reintroduced to the show and he's being quite manipulated by Homelander. And they also did like the um, the show to get someone back on the Seven. Mm. Yeah, they've got like a, a reality TV show where if you win it 
well, two people finished the top, they joined the seven. Mm. So they've added in a love interest, an ex love interest of Starlight, who actually seems like quite a cool character mm. and seems to be nice. And then they've decided to completely skip the show and add in the Deep, who mm. wasn't even on it. And yeah, it's Homelander is now making a point to, you know, torture every single person within the seven because he can. Mm. Um, so yeah, and it, as always, there's graphical scenes there's you know violence there's sex there's some really full-on stuff but it's been a great series so far for the three episodes uh what talking points do you have from the first three episodes or some early predictions to what you think might happen i guess the um interesting to see the in the um flashback actually seeing black noir when he was younger mm. so where are we left with black noir is he dead in the in our t- in the timeline or no? We just well, we've got injured. Okay, but we don't believe he's dead though. No. So he um, what what were they saying he did when he was younger? He cre- he created some kind of mess and they had to clean it up. Is that what was implied? Yeah. Mm. And I guess we're seeing these flashbacks of Soldier Boy, and I guess that's quite cool. And we're getting a bit more understanding of this female character that helped Billy with hiding his son. Yeah. Um. What other cool things has happened in this series? There's been lots of cool things, but I guess we see A-Train trying to change his... Where do you see the story with A-Train going? It's kind of like that they want him to um, come good and he wants to become back to his African roots. Like, out of all the characters, I don't really see what they're tending to do with him. I think A-Train will become a good guy. I don't think he's too bad. You know, the series... The whole series of the boys started off with him, you know, being a bad person and killing someone by accident. But I think he's trying to become clean and ultimately he's he said that he doesn't know if he can go fast again because if he does, he might explode his heart from the damage he's caused from taking excess amounts of compound V. Mm. So he... Um, I don't know if we'll see him use his powers, but he's trying to find a way to be relevant still. So he's going with this whole... African. Yeah, being African, returning to his roots. And I guess that's a cool storyline. I don't yeah. mind it. Um, I'm, I like the Deep. He's my favourite character, so it's cool to see him return. But they're now trying to add this element that he's... You know, he's came good and he's clean, but he wants to... He seems to have, you know, like this sexual tendency towards animals now, like mm. aquatic animals because of him being, you know, Aquaman. Mm. So I don't know where it's going with that, but I, I the scene in the last episode where Homelander made him eat the octopus yeah. live, I found, I found that really disturbing. Mm. And that was quite cruel, but that's just, you know, typical of Homelander just, you know, wanting to, you know, mess with everyone he can. Yeah, you know, I agree with that. Where do you think, where, what do you think is going to happen with this? Uh, soldier boy do you think he's in fact dead or well remember in the trail we saw this bearded man come out of like this staging area and that was soldier boy mm. remember billy's like oh the soldier boy so we know he's actually not dead well that's what i thought i from my i didn't when we were seeing the flashbacks i was like i just didn't and they're saying he's dead i was like i thought he was just alive we just hadn't seen him in a while mm. so he'll return and which side do you think he'll be on do you think he'll be useful and Stopping Homelander, or will you be on Homelander's side? I don't know. Hmm. What's your What's your first guess? What's your instincts say? Um. Oh, well, he's such a nasty person. I would assume he would be with Homelander, but they're both alpha males, so he might just purposely help the um. The boys just to get Homeland out of the way so he can become the leader of the Seven, you know? I'd lean towards that. I think that the story... They need someone to be against Homelander because if anyone sides with him, he becomes unbeatable. Mm. So I, I don't know if the show eventually, you know, ends with Homelander dying or Homelander becoming good. Mm. But at the moment, he's heading on a path where it's quite dangerous and people live in fear of him. Mm. Um, what other story arcs do you see? Do you see um, what are, what do you think will happen with Huey's boss, the one that can explode heads? Oh, it's pretty powerful. Um, superpower. I don't know how you intend to um stop that, or uh, I don't know. It's pretty um 
good power to have on your side, I guess, um, Billy stops it or something happens? Yeah, or do you think she becomes good? Like, I don't know if she is evil as such. Like, the people she's taken out, it seems like she's done it to help Vought out because she mm. has a vested interest in Vought. But is she evil or she's just trying to help her dad's company? Just trying to help her dad's company? Mm. So maybe she might be a piece in the puzzle of actually doing good stuff. Mm. Um, what else? You got any questions for me? Uh, did you like the confrontation between Billy and Homelander when they were in Billy's um, hotel room? Yeah, I think Billy doesn't seem to fear someone that could seriously hurt him. No. Which is quite cool. I guess he feels that he's got, you know, some bargaining chips against him, you know, having information and footage of him doing stuff. But it seems that it's at a point now Homelander doesn't care. If everyone starts to hate him, then he, as he said, oh, he has nothing to lose. Mm. So he will then, you know, start, he'll just destroy the world, really. Mm. Which is quite scary. And Starlight tried to use her um, bargaining chip with the footage in season one, but it didn't work. Mm. So I'm, I'm hoping he... Uh, maybe Homelander changes his mind. Because, you know, he was, you know, like, built in a lab and raised kind of, you know, not right. So maybe he might take out Vought and then become a good person and ultimately realise that Vought's the enemy, not him and not everyone else. Mm. You like how, since seeing the Diabolical series, we're starting to see elements... Children. Of- yeah, we're starting to see elements of things that were in that show yeah. creep into it. So we're seeing the orphanage. And that's who we went to. Mm. Whether it's the same one from Diabolical, I don't know. But we've still seen that concept of, you know, kids that have been rejected by their parents and sent there. Uh, what other things? There's been a few things that have crept into that were part of that series that have joined in. Um, and I, Like, it's kind of linking them together without needing to like they don't have to but they are and it's nice yeah so i'm glad i did watch the diabolical series uh do you do you do you think it was harsh for um billy to um neglect and treat his um the boy that he's looking after or do you think in his mind he he's going through the effects of the superpowers so he didn't want there to be any bad blood or something uh i was under the impression that he was intentionally being rude because he wanted to like cut ties with the son for his protection Mm. because if he's kept too close to him and he put him at risk with, with, with Homelander. Yeah. So I think he didn't mean it, but he said it on purpose to try and, you know, say like, hey, I won't be around you no more, mate. But really, he's just trying to protect him. Because mm. obviously he doesn't mean, I think he wants to wants to have this kid in his life and wants to be a father to him. Mm. I would agree with that. Yeah, but it's more, you know, sometimes you've got to push someone away in order to protect them because he won't understand that his dad, you know, if he if he doesn't, you know, push him away, he'll be at risk. But the boy could also be another bargaining chip or way to take down Homelander because he seems to have his father's abilities. Mm. He just isn't as big as him yet and hasn't learned how to use them, but he might actually be more powerful. Mm. So that might be another way of defeating Homelander through the use of his own son. Mm. Do you do you see um, Homelander just taking o- over Vault because it seems like he no he's not respected within the company so it seems strange that there's I don't know no um like he's the most powerful superhero but to the company it's more about figures and profit and ratings. Yeah, whether you take over the company, I don't know, but. He'll continue to manipulate them now because, one, his popularity is going up, so they need him. And two, he ultimately can kill them if he wants to, so they will give in to what he says eventually. What was your thoughts about how the action scenes went? Like in episode uh, one, basically, one of the supers was like Ant-Man and he could do like sexual things and he tried to like get into body parts of um the boys and then we saw him like get into a 
a, a censored part of one of the um, mm. people and then he like killed him. Yeah, so I think that was an interesting thing Super. to add that, you know, he could basically be like Ant-Man. Yeah. And then from that he could do whatever, but he was, you know, he was a gay male and he was, you know, doing sexual acts with uh, his partner. And then through, because they'd been doing drugs, he like sneezed and then that made him go to normal size and he ultimately killed the person because he was inside them when he expanded. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a scary power, but he was intending to kill Frenchie in the same way. Yeah. So that seems to be his way of killing people by getting inside them and expanding, which is, we've never, we haven't seen that with Ant-Man. Mm. Like Ant-Man, you know, doesn't <laughs> seem to kill people in that way by going in eternally and then expanding, but I guess it could work. Yes. I think it's definitely, um... I, I agree with you with your thoughts about how The Boys is very much, um, you know, very crude and kind of, um, it's very clever with how it's, um, with how it tells its story. It ticks a lot of boxes. So the story itself is very good. Yeah. The fact that it is relatable because it is a mixture between Marvel and DC. Yeah. The fact it kind of, takes a, makes a joke out of what our world is like we are as humans we're kind of not everyone but marvel is so big that we you know like we're surrounded by it we're waiting for their next lot of movies they're like a lot of franchise to come out they're kind of with the boys taking the, making a joke out of that saying like oh it's all about popularity and superheroes are a business mm. so they've taken something that's real and you know made it to the extreme and then They've added in a whole bunch of really cool characters. And then the element of what if superheroes weren't good? Like, what if they had these abilities and, you know, they did save us, but they're not good people, you know? They, they think they're superheroes. They thought they are. They think they're celebrities. They're famous. That's more about that than anything else. And then what happens if superheroes turn on us, which is kind of similar to the, the plot of Batman versus Superman. The, mm. Bruce Wayne was saying, well... We need, you know, a silver bullet in case Superman decides to, you know, take us out. Like, he's so powerful. We need to have something up our arsenal to protect ourselves from him because he's too strong. His powers are too dangerous. And so that's, this is kind of building on that by, you know, Homelander is too dangerous. But unlike Superman, who is good, Homelander has got a bit of a nasty streak to him. So it's, there's so much to like about it. There's, it's a show that doesn't have many plot holes. It doesn't have many low points. It doesn't have many things that aren't exciting. And there's all. And then on top of that, they chuck in, you know, whether it be the swearing, the nudity, the crudeness. It's just always something that, like, there's a shock factor on top of it always. So it ticks a lot of boxes. Mm. I guess the only negative that I could say about The Boys is that you kind of got to be in the mood for the... For its storytelling and for the gore and stuff like that, not everyone it will appeal to. But besides that, I'm really impressed with the free episode and its direction as well. Like I personally like that. It's very convenient that the that Bort is making the drug, but I'm happy that Billy the Butcher is using it. And I don't know about yourself, but for the future episodes, I would really like to see Billy and Homelander have a fight eventually and, you know, Billy lose and then we get to see, you know, some sort of confrontation. It adds a cool element because the, you know, the boys, the main, the characters that are on, on our side, the good side, they, you know, if they were to have abilities and become superheroes it'd go against everything they stand. But we ultimately know that they don't have the ability to fight the superheroes on a level playing field. So by adding in this element of the compound B that's temporary, it allows those two things to happen. It allows, you know, Billy or Huey to fight against superheroes with powers, but then to return to normalcy afterwards, mm. where once they become a hero permanently, there's no one doing that. It's like, you know, a movie where, you know, like someone needs to be a vampire in order to fight the vampire. But once they become a vampire, okay. yeah, you can't undo it. Where this is giving that option of going, you can temporarily be on an equal playing field, but 
you not that there's no cost in it, like the, it, there's no you're not stuck there so it it, uh, it allows the series to continue on and them to be there human again at the end of it well they were teasing in season one that Huey might have um powers but they kind of stopped that yeah they did actually that vanished like there's been no real mention of that again mm. but i think we we later then discovered that the powers are not born with no like the genetic yeah and we know that he was not as far as aware not you know given compound b but at that point, we still thought that, you know, people naturally got them. So we're like, oh, maybe he doesn't know he has powers. But if he was given Compound V, he would have known or his parents would have tried to get him to use those powers. Well, Homelander's son is the first one that naturally has powers because his father was a superhero. Mm. Yeah, so getting it's it's very cool, you know. The only thing, I guess, with it is it's not appropriate for everyone. Yeah. So beyond that, as long as you're of, you know... The yeah, the right age, and you know, you don't mind those like a bit of crudeness, then you know, you're gonna like it. Where you know, it's, yeah, it's just not applicable for everyone, but those that can watch it, I can't see why you wouldn't like it. Explaining the politics behind it sounds semi complex when you talk about it, but when you watch it, it's done at a pace where you can follow it very easily. Like, there, there's not something really wild about it, you know, there's the board corporation. They, you know, sold the ability for people to become superheroes by injecting them. And they're using those superheroes to, you know, profit off because the superheroes fight crime. But then they people want to see them make movies. They want to buy their books. They want to buy their, super, their action figures. It's a business. Like, it's very simple to understand that. And then there's the humans that, you know, don't really feel safe around superheroes because they have too much power. So there's not too much to it and it's easy to follow. But there's so many good complex elements in it. Mm. Definitely excited for episode four. I assume the same for you. Yeah, it um, comes out today. So probably be watching that tonight. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. We are the Obi Thorn Alliance with two different perspectives. Like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Let the force be with you. Bye-bye.